Just about any new electronic product is going to require some sort of brains. The question though is, what type of brains does your product need? Well, there are two choices. You have a microcontroller unit or a microprocessor unit. And in this video, you're going to discover how to determine which of these processor choices is right for your specific product. Hi, I'm John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs, where we help entrepreneurs, startups, inventors, and small businesses develop new electronic products. Okay, let's get started. Well, as the name implies, a microcontroller excels at controlling other hardware components like sensors, switches, motors, etc. Whereas a microprocessor excels at processing large amounts of data very quickly. That being said, microcontrollers are able to also process data and microprocessors are able to control other devices, but each excels in one area. Selecting the correct option is one of the most important first steps to developing your new electronic product. A microcontroller contains a central processing unit or just CPU, but it also includes memory and peripherals all embedded in a single chip. A microcontroller is a highly integrated computer chip designed mostly to stand on its own without the need for external support chips. The central processing unit inside of a microcontroller is essentially the same as a microprocessor. So fundamentally, a microprocessor is pretty much just a CPU. On the other hand, a microcontroller includes a CPU plus memory and peripherals. The first rule to remember is that whenever it is possible, always use a microcontroller. Your life will be so much easier. Only consider a microprocessor if it's absolutely required. I estimate that probably 90% of the product ideas I see inside my Hardware Academy program are, can be best served with a microcontroller. And maybe 10 to 20% of products that I see are really complex enough to warrant a faster microprocessor. I recommend approaching this decision by assuming your product can use a microcontroller until you can prove otherwise. Although there will be some applications that are best served with both a microcontroller and a microprocessor. For instance, let's say you have an advanced robot with artificial intelligence, facial recognition, speech processing, and a complex graphical user, user interface. All of that's gonna require a fast microprocessor. But on the other hand, this robot also needs to, to control sensors and motors and other mechanic, uh, other devices like that. And those functions are best controlled by a microcontroller separate from the core microprocessor. The microcontroller will act as a subsystem that interfaces with the microprocessor in such a case where you have both a microcontroller and a microprocessor. If you already have a proof of concept prototype based on an Arduino, then your choice is much easier. An Arduino is based on a microcontroller, and in fact, it's based on a rather simple microcontroller at that. If you've been able to create a proof of concept prototype for your product using an Arduino, then a microcontroller is almost definitely the right choice for your product for once you go into production and you move past just having the proof of concept prototype. If on the other hand, you built your proof of concept prototype using a microprocessor development kit, such as a Raspberry Pi, then your choice isn't quite so clear. I've seen a good number of projects built on a Raspberry Pi for their proof of concept that could in fact have been more easily created using an Arduino. So just because you have been using a Raspberry Pi or a microprocessor based development kit, doesn't necessarily mean your production product requires such a high-speed processor. So I'm gonna look at different scenarios where you would wanna use either, what we'll discuss which option is best, a microcontroller or a microprocessor. And the first one I wanna look at is video. So if you want your, your device has to record or playback video, then for standard definition video, a microcontroller is usually up to the task. 
In fact, a microcontroller can even handle up to 720p HD video just fine. However, once you exceed past 720p and you move to 1080p or even further to 4K, then it becomes necessary to use a more advanced microprocessor. When it comes to video, the decision whether to use a microcontroller or a microprocessor many times comes down to the communication interfaces available and not necessarily the processing speed. There are many protocols used to interface cameras and displays to your product's brains. Many, but not all of these, are supported by microcontrollers. For lower resolution cameras, a relatively simple serial protocol such as SPI is is a reasonable option. However, for higher resolution cameras, it becomes necessary to use a parallel interface to meet the necessary data throughput speeds. A parallel camera interface can be used just fine with most microcontrollers up to a resolution of 720p. Once you exceed the resolution of 720p of a 720p camera, then the data speeds need to be much higher. Most cameras with resolutions higher than 720p use a very high-speed serial video interface known as MIPI. Actually, that is the name of the organization that oversees this standard, but you'll typically just see it referred to as a MIPI interface. Specifically, cameras use an interface known as MIPI.CSI, where the, the C is for camera. And displays use an interface protocol known as MIPI dot or dash DSI, where the D is for display. These two protocols are used in almost all modern smartphones to communicate between the display and the cameras with the microprocessor that's in the phone. Because of this fact, there are numerous displays and cameras available only with a MIPI interface. Well, up until a couple years ago, MIPI interfaces were only found in the realm of high-speed, high-performance microprocessors. Sometimes you'll also see microprocessors called application processors, but we'll call them microprocessors. If you were developing a product that uses an advanced, high-resolution display, then you had to use a microprocessor. Fortunately, ST Microelectronics changed all of that when they introduced their microcontroller called the STM32F469. Whew, that's a mouthful. But and this is just one of the chips available in the very large STM32 microcontroller family, which just happens to be my favorite microcontrollers. Well, the STM32F469 is based on a super fast ARM Cortex M4 32-bit processor core. The STM32 or F469 is the world's first microcontroller to incorporate a MIPI DSI interface. So if your product requires an advanced display with a MIPI DSI interface, you can now use a microcontroller instead of being forced to use a microprocessor. Unfortunately, this STM32 microcontroller does not include a MIPI CSI camera interface, so you'll still be limited in your selection of HD cameras, but not HD displays. So if you require a 1080p camera, for example, you will still need to use a microprocessor and not a microcontroller. Okay, so we've, we've looked at cameras. Next, I want to talk about USB 3.0. So if you want to incorporate the, the insanely fast USB 3.0 standard in your product, then you're going to need to match it with a really fast microprocessor. USB 2.0 has a maximum theoretical speed of 480 megabits per second, which is 60 megabytes per second. Most slower microcontrollers only incorporate USB 2.0 full speed mode, which is rated at only 12 megabits per second. There are plenty of higher end microcontrollers that can support USB 2.0 high speed mode at up to 480 megabits per second. The new USB 3.0 standard blows these specs out of the water with a maximum throughput speed 10 times faster than USB 2.0 at five gigabits per second. There are no microcontrollers available, at least currently, that can handle such an incredibly high data transfer speed. 
So if you want to incorporate USB 3.0, you have to use a much faster microprocessor. Next, I want to look at processing speed in general. If your product requires complex data to be quickly processed, then a microprocessor is most likely going to be required. One way around this requirement is to offload your processing requirements to a smartphone. For example, you could potentially use a microcontroller in your device to collect the necessary data, then transfer that data over to a mobile app for any advanced processing requirements. The processor in your smartphone is obviously extremely fast. This can be a simple trick for some applications that will allow you to get by with a simpler, lower cost microcontroller that won't drain your battery so quickly. Okay, next I want to look at graphical user interface. For a simple GUI interface, it's completely possible to use a microcontroller. However, as the complexity and resolution of this graphical interface increases, so do the needs for processing speed. Using a higher-end microcontroller allows you to develop some pretty sophisticated user interfaces. For example, again, the STM32F469 microcontroller includes a hardware graphics accelerator allowing it to be used to create very complex graphical user interfaces. There may become a point, however, where it becomes necessary to use an even faster microprocessor for truly advanced, very high resolution user interfaces. Okay, when it comes to conserving battery life, a microcontroller is the clear winner here. Game over, no competition. The slower speeds of a microcontroller just simply translate to less power consumption. For example, an Arduino Uno uses a maximum current of around 45 milliamps, whereas a Raspberry Pi 3 consumes about 580 milliamps. However, most microcontrollers also implement various low power modes that can allow it to enter standby or sleep states. The current consumption may drop from tens or hundreds of milliamps when running to only a few microamps in standby mode. An external interrupt can be used to wake up the microcontroller when in this sleep mode. If battery life or ultra small size is critical for your product, then you're most likely going to want to use a microcontroller. And the reason I, I say also small size is important is because if you have higher power consumption and you need to maintain the same battery life, then that obviously means you need a bigger battery, which is going to just increase your product size. And this is why many smartwatches use microcontrollers, just mainly due to their, their much lower power consumption. If you need access to large amounts of really fast memory, then a microprocessor is likely going to be your best option. A microcontroller is already embedded with memory, so the memory choices are much fewer than what you're going to have with a microprocessor. The maximum amount of flash memory available with most microcontrollers is usually around 2 megabytes. However, it is possible to incorporate additional external flash memory into a microcontroller system. This memory typically interfaces with the microcontroller via a fairly fast SPI serial interface, and faster microcontrollers even support quad SPI. But if you need lots of high-speed RAM memory, then you're likely going to need to use a microprocessor. Adding high-speed DDR RAM memory to a microcontroller system is not practical, and that is the domain typically of a microprocessor. Next up, one big differentiator between a microprocessor and a microcontroller is the operating system. So a microprocessor requires an operating system, such as Windows, Android, Linux, etc. On the other hand, a microcontroller can run straight firmware without the requirement of an operating system. This doesn't mean a, a microcontroller can't run an operating system, but the choices are more limited, usually to some sort of real-time operating system. For starters, an operating system requires quite a bit of processing overhead and memory. For example, running a full operating system such as Windows or Android or Linux will require 300 DMIPS of processor speed overhead, whereas an, a real-time operating system may only require around 50 DMIPS of processing speed and a few kilobytes of memory for the operating system kernel. 
So here's a table where I've listed out various different applications and whether or not a microcontroller or a microprocessor or both are the best solution for that particular feature. So the first one that we have is Bluetooth. And for Bluetooth, typically that's low enough data speeds that a microcontroller is going to be used. And most, almost all Bluetooth radios use a microcontroller. Wi-Fi. That can also be done with microcontrollers such as the ESP32, which is a very fast microcontroller. Uh, that's a, a Wi-Fi microcontroller, um, but you can also use a microprocessor if you need uh, really fast uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, then you have cellular. Uh, that can be a microcontroller. Sensors can be a micro. Obviously, is a microcontroller. GPS is another one that could be served by a microcontroller. These are all typically things that have pretty low throughput speeds. Uh, obviously, controlling a motor or a solenoid is going to be the realm of a microcontroller. Uh, an SD camera, so standard definition camera, can be best served with a microcontroller and even 720p HD video, then a microcontroller is going to be your best choice. It's once you get into high definition uh, HD video, so 1080, or not just H HD, but 1080p HD, then you're going to need a microprocessor because at the time of this video, uh, and I don't know of any in the works, there are no microcontrollers that can do 1080p HD video. Then if you want to also have a really advanced display, like say the, the high resolution display that's in a smartphone, then you're going to need to most likely use a microprocessor, or you could use the STM32F469, which has the MIPI interface. And the reason uh, these are you're forced into these choices is mainly due to the, the MIPI interface, which most microcontrollers do not support. Then we have USB 3.0, and for that, you're you're definitely going to need to use a microprocessor. It's just that the data speeds are too fast for any microcontrollers to be able to manage. Real-time processing, in that case, you're gonna a microcontroller is gonna be the best solution. If long battery life and small product size are really important for your product, then definitely a microcontroller is going to be your best choice. Uh, if you need advanced pro data processing, uh, then definitely that's where a microprocessor is going to be your best option since those excel at processing large amounts of data. And then finally, if you have a graphical user interface, you could use a microcontroller. Uh, but if it gets to be really advanced and really high resolution, then a microprocessor is going to be your best choice. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this video here, which is a 90 minute master class where I cover all the steps required to develop a new electronic product. Or you can check out this video here where I talk about the importance of simplifying your design.